Okay, welcome back to your 21st web scraping tutorial. And basically, I've improved our um, spider algorithm because before we were using depth first search for web crawling. And that's actually kind of a, a joke if you think about it because if you're using depth first search to crawl the internet, you're basically trying to find the very last page of the internet, which I think only Google has accomplished at this point. So it's kind of a fool's errand to send it out and expect it to collect every single page. So what I've actually done is I have um, implemented a function called scraper and I give it the URL, which is the root, and I give it the number of steps or the depth that I want it to search. And basically this is a breadth first search. Um, actually, it's not really a, a breadth first search. I guess it's, yeah, I guess it is a breadth first search. So, um, yeah, it's a breadth first search that goes out a certain number of steps. So here's scraper, the function that I, um, I call and I give it the root and, um, I actually um, I put root into the URLs array and I put root into the visited array. I set a counter to be zero and basically I say while well, counter is left less than steps. So that's what takes care of my um, steps, how many, the depth that I want it to go to. So it's not the case that it runs out of pages to scrape. It's the case that um, it's gone a certain depth in that um, topic. So I don't want, I want to target my, um, my algorithm. So what I'll do is I'll have a list of keywords and I'll say get a certain amount of um, content on each topic because after a while, if I'm using depth for search with a depth of like 30, after a while it's going to start getting onto like irrelevant pages and it's going to not be in our favor. So. I can also use some keyword analysis to determine if it's getting the right topic, or I can categorize articles on the fly, which I'll be showing that algorithm in a little bit. Um, so right here what it does is it says step URL is equal to scrape step of URLs. So basically scrape step is like, it just gets all the links on that one page. Or actually, I pass an array to it. So in this case on scrape step, root is actually an array. So I want to get everything in that array. So if you think about it, each step, you're passing the results of the last step. So say my first step, um, I'll actually use ADB News as an example. So um, if I go to um, adbnews.com slash, uh, what was it, area 51. Um, I can say, if I was to just get one step, I would get contact about an index. If I was to get two steps, I would say, okay, in my first step, I got about contact and index. And then in my second step, I'm going to visit um, contact and I'm going to get all the links on contact. I'm going to get, go to about, get all the links on about, and I'm going to go to index and get all the results on index and then I'll just take the unique ones. So I basically say, so I'm just using br.mechanize because um, it's just a better way to request HTML. So I say for URL and root, so in the root array for every everything that it got in the last step, I want to go through it and I want to find all the links and then I want to just automatically append them to this array. I don't care if I've already seen it because these are concurrent threads. Um, yeah, so these are concurrent threads. I think I have, um, actually these are not concurrent threads at the moment, they're running synchronous, they're running one after another but the reason why I am 
doing it in this manner where this function can return duplicates is because you don't have to have threads communicating with one another. So what it will do is all the threads will be working in parallel. They might find similar results, but I'm not going to have them communicating back and forth while they're in the parallel process because that would just be like kind of stupid to, to do that. So all the threads, once in a while, they all meet back up together. And then there's a short period of where it combines everything and it figures out what all the threads have done and then it branches out to multiple threads again. So if you think about it, it's like a, it expands and contracts to um, multiple threads. Like on one, one page, it might find a thousand links. So it might go to a thousand threads and then come back to one thread, out to a thousand, back to one. So that's basically how this works. And then for URL and root, I, I bas this is the same as the last tutorial. I just copied that code over. And no matter what, even if it's already in, if there's another thread that's part, that's found the same link, we return it back. So basically, we return all the results that we found for that one, um, that one uh, step. Um, hold on. So this is actually the part where I'm going to implement the multi-threading, and then. So all the thread picture in your mind, all the threads have returned back. Um, they have returned back their results. So I have all the results back here, and then this is the part where I determine if I've seen it or not. So if so, I say if you um, not in visited, I say urls dot append you, and this is this is the part where I determine if I've seen it or not, and then I increment my counter and then I return um, all of the results that I have visited. So basically this is, the reason I'm implementing it like this is because I'm showing breadth for search. I, I forgot for a minute why I was showing this code. It seemed similar to the past code. I wasn't using multi-threading, but it's, um, the reason it's important is because it's breadth for search. So if I just go to, um, the bottom and I say scraper of URL of one, save this file, and then I go back up to, uh, this is the, the URL. So it goes out to adbnews.com slash area 51. And I think it should just get um, three links. It should get contact about an index if it's working in a correct, correct implementation. So I'll hit Enter. Um, so we have a problem here. It went to Spark Browser instead. I think I have to save this. What the heck? All right, I'm just gonna open up Python again. Um, hold on. So open up Python, and I will say exec file um, web scraper slash multi html .py. Okay, so it got area fifty one. It got area fifty one slash contact. It got about .html. And then it got HTTP news. Yeah, so it got exactly what I expected it to get. It got three links on that one page plus the root node. And this is the root node is area 51 with no, nothing else. So if I go to the second, if I say I'm going to give it a depth of two, it should be, um, let me show what it should be. It should include first level as well. So it should be all the same stuff except first level will be included too. So I'll hit run and it got first level as well. So if I give it a depth of three, we'll see what it should give. 
Uh, hold on. So it got bling, and then if I increase it to five, it should get the last page. And then if I set it to six, remember on the sixth step, it goes out to an external link. It goes to Disney.com. So if I go six, and then I hit Alt P, it should be a huge array. Um, actually, it starts counting at zero. So there's the problem. Um, ADP is area 51. Let me just give it a depth of 8. Um, I don't think it's working correctly. Let me see what the problem is. First of all, in second level, third level, fourth level, fifth level. Let me just give it a depth of 12 and see if that fixes the problem. Okay. So I gave it a depth of 12, and it found Disney.com. Um, so, I'm actually not sure what the problem is. Give it a depth of 13. This doesn't really make sense why it's doing this, but whatever. Okay, so it went out to Disney that time. And I actually have to figure out why it did that, but um, basically I'm just showing you how depth first search and um, breath first search differ, differ and why it's important to use um, breath first search and why it's also important to separate your um, separate it into each step so that you can have each step run so basically the steps one run one after another but the reason why you need um, to pass root as a array instead of um, querying it over and over and over again is because when you pass as an array, you can basically go out to multiple threads and split everything up with parallelism. So if you've ever used like CUDA or GPU computing, you're supposed to uh, pass your variables as an array so that the, the I guess the um, GPUs, they like take vectors and then they do some vector math on them. But this is a little different because we're using whatever's in this function is executed um, linearly, but multiple functions can be executed in parallel. So that's the reason why this is really, um, really nice and it's faster, but this actually isn't implemented with threads. That's what I'm going to do next. And I think that's about it, but um, with web crawling, you have, to, you have to use a breath first search or else you will spider the entire internet. So, this has been your 21st web scraping tutorial.